In this tutorial, we will be going over creating basic scripts for Mudlet. Mudlet uses Lua for its scripting, and Lua is a lightweight and speedy scripting language well suited for embedding in other programs. Specifically, I will be covering how to create a script in Mudlet, how to write a function to group repeated actions together, and how to pass information into functions. So let's get started by clicking on scripts to bring up the script editor. Then we'll click on add group to create a folder. And this we will use to organize our various scripts in. You can put code in these if you like, but I usually use them to keep things tidy and just organize everything in. And I'm just going to name this tutorial scripts and click on save item. Then when we click on add item, it will create the new script object inside of the folder we just created. Let's give this a name and then save it. Now, over here on the left, you can use the drop down marker to show or hide the scripts that are in this group. Makes things a lot easier later on when you're having to browse through a lot of different scripts. All right, now moving over here on the right, I just want to take a moment to acknowledge that the registered events handlers and add user event handler boxes do exist. Uh, these are used for dealing with events, which are a mudlet feature that are going to get their own video soon. But in the meantime, we can pretend these don't exist and concern ourselves primarily with this big, beautiful box down here. This is where we will put all of our Lua instructions. Scripts are run every time you save them and also once when the profile loads. So they're a great place to put functions, which you'll use later on in your triggers and aliases. So they're already defined and ready to go by the time you connect to your game. If I type a basic instruction in here, such as send hello and click save, you can see here in the main screen that it immediately sends the, the hello. Send is Mudlet's basic function to send something to the game as though you typed it in as a command. So this isn't super helpful to have in a script like this, but what we're going to do now is create a function which can perform multiple different tasks and produce output as a block. And we can reuse that block anytime we want to do it, whether it's in a trigger or an alias or somewhere else. We'll start by creating a table. You could think of a table as kind of like a filing cabinet to hold your stuff. In this case, I'm naming the table Demonic because that's my name, but you could use anything you think is unlikely to be used by someone else. I'd steer clear of simple obvious names like HP or Vitals so you can avoid fighting over the name when you install someone else's scripts. Also, I write it here in the form of Demonic equals Demonic or, so that if the table is already defined, it doesn't wipe it out and redefine it. This way, if I'm working on my scripts while playing, I'm not constantly wiping everything out. So this line says to Lua, create a variable named demonic, and if demonic already exists, store it there. Otherwise, store an empty table there. Variables are kind of like labels you put on information so that you can find them again later. In this case, we're labeling this table as the variable demonic so that when we look for demonic later, we get this table. The open and closed curly braces tell Lua you're defining a table. When used like this, it creates an empty table. I'll go over other ways to make tables with pre-filled data in a later video specifically for tables, but for now, just know that we're creating or reusing a table named demonic to hold the function we're about to write. Now, let's define the function. Use the function keyword followed by the name you want to store the function under, in this case, demonic.testFunction, because that tells Lua to put the test function inside the demonic table. So it creates a drawer or variable in the filing cabinet labeled test function, and it will store the function in that drawer for us to get later. The end here denotes the end of the function. I go ahead and add it immediately, and then I never have to wonder if I close the function as I did it right away. Now, whatever we put between this function line and this end line will be stored as demonic.test function. So let's put some stuff in there. For this first line, we start with the local keyword. This tells Lua that you only care about the variable you're about to define inside of this function. It will only exist while this function is running and will not be accessible to anything outside of this function. But it also means that it won't accidentally overwrite any other time variable which has been created.
get time here tells Mudlet to tell us what time it is, and the HHMMSS string tells it what format we want to see the time in. In this case, it's hours, minutes, and seconds. I'll put a link to the information on get time in the description if you're interested in more information on that. We then take this information and echo it to the main window. The dot dot here tells Lua that we are going to add these two strings together. So we'll add whatever is in the time variable to the time is. And then we add a new line, which is what this backslash n stands for. That's like telling the computer to hit enter in the output for you so that anything after it appears on a new line. Now, when we click save, you see that nothing happens in the main window. But if I use the built-in Lua alias to run the function, you can see the output. And there you see the time is 6.05. I run it again, and we get new output. Now, let's say we want to have it echo the time in a color we can specify. Going back into the script, we would add what's called a parameter to the function. In this case, we'll just call it color. Then, we need to change the echo to C echo as that is the same as echo, but allows us to colorize the output. The color itself is going to need to be in angle brackets, as that is what tells C echo to change the color. But otherwise, it's exactly the same as it was before. We're just gluing smaller strings together to form a bigger one. Now, if we click Save Item, we can go back here, and once again, using, using the Lua function, we can see the output. Now notice here that I put red in quotation marks. This is so that it's using the actual value red. If I don't put it in quotation marks, it will attempt to look in the variable named red, which has not been defined and we would get an error. You can also see that I can use other colors such as blue or green, and it will change the color in the output that's produced by the function. In today's video, we went over the basics of script objects in Mudlet, how to create variables and functions in a script, and how to write a function which can change what it does based on the information you pass into it. Future videos in this tutorial series will expand upon this information, but these basics of creating and interacting with Lua variables and functions form the core of what you will need to know when working with other things, such as triggers and aliases, in order to get the most out of Mudlet's potential. I hope this video was informative and helpful, and I look forward to creating and sharing the next one with you all. Until then, happy mudding!